Okay. Um, the, uh, uh, what the white man has named it polygamy. The white man call it polygamy. Here, we don't call it polygamy. It is, research have shown that women are more than men in Ghana. Uh, women are 52 point something percent and men are 47 point something percent. So, there are a certain type of group, a group of people, if you are to share one on one, there's going to be a group of women that they, they will never have a husband. Let me ask this question. I will first ask the women. If your husband is sitting by your side, don't look at his face. If your wife is sitting by your side, don't look at his face. Just the rest, answer me. <laughs> and the women, I would like to ask, would you like to have another husband? No. To have two husbands? No. Oh, yeah, someone, someone, well, someone. I'm taking it, I'm taking it from the standpoint of men having uh, extra wine. I mean, but in the reality right now, no, I don't want another husband. One was enough. No. But I'm, I'm, if we're taking it from from your thinking, yeah. would, I, would I like to have another husband yeah. besides um, my husband? Yeah. Besides my husband. Two husbands. Two husbands. Right. Uh, yeah, why not? Maybe the first one can't do what he's supposed to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and that's just, that, I think that is the right answer. So, <laughs> now, naturally, if she's sitting here next to her husband, she's not going to be honest. Because he's sitting oh, there. Oh, yes, I would, because he would know me. Anybody talk about that? So you crazy. Can, you are crazy. So I guess she will want you talk about. You talking about a spare tire or an uh, <laughs> 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 One of them will be a spare tire. One of them will be a red tire. <laughs> she just said what she wanted to say. Yeah. But I was just saying, from an environment. No, I asked the women. I didn't ask the men. That's right. You so you know, hold on, George. He's not even supposed to George, be hold on. No, no George, hold on. Yeah, oh, okay, God. I was asking the women. Okay, um, okay you said no. Why? One is enough. Yes. Okay. to marry four wives so now the men would you like to have another wife absolutely don't look at your wife's face talk to me talk to me, to me. Yeah. she will change she might change your mind talk to me no no the reason 
because in my opinion, first off, you got one wife, that's one house you gotta buy for her. Uh -huh. a, whatever car she wants, you gotta buy that for her. And everything that you do for one wife, you gotta do it for the second or something. Okay, okay. Okay, let's ask and uh, no. Would you like to have another wife? No, not now. Not now. I tried. I I lived a long time and I fantasized having more and I can't even have one. So I just it doesn't it doesn't work for me. Okay. Okay. Yes sir, we want to hear from you. Would you like to have another wife? Uh, huh? Would you like to have two wives? At my age now, and with my finances, I would say no. Because I won't be able to give her what she desires, what she needs. So are you trying to imply, or you are, you are, you are, you are trying to say that women are expensive? Yes. As a result of that, you don't have the yes. money to take care yes. of them? Yes. So yes. meaning that if the money comes and the money flows, how many wives are you going to have? Oh, I'm going to like Solomon. <laughs> Solomon and his wives. No, no, no. Yeah. If I was younger, I would probably say three. And that's not for sexual purposes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Well, what the Did he say three? No. He said yeah. three. That's a pretty good number. No. Okay. If you are younger, okay, maybe let's take 20 years out of your years. Okay. Is it like start at 40? Okay. I don't know who said it, but they said it. And you are 40 years old. <coughs> you have the money. You would like to marry more than one wife. Why? Yes, I agree. I, I agree with him. Yeah. And I agree with him. It's just the reverse of what my sister said. There's different value yeah, in yeah. each one. That's yeah. why I You know what I mean? One can yeah. look better than the other one. Yeah. And whatever. But but I love them in the skin. But then, all folks. All the for different reasons. Okay. Okay. Now, um, you know in Africa, men marries more than one wife in Africa. When you have the African concept in you, whether you're a man or woman, if you're a man, you definitely like to marry more than one wife. If you're a woman, you know that there's someone who will be the second wife or the third wife or the fourth wife. It has been established from the very beginning, yes. Yeah, I'll come to that. First wife, second wife, and third wife. The first wife, in the olden days, 70 years, 80 years, 100, 120, 200 years ago, even 60 years ago, it is your parents who will marry for you. You don't have the right to choose who you want to marry. Because you live with your parents, you work with your parents, your parents' profession are your profession, especially your father. Your father's profession is for the male. You, the uh, male, you have the same profession. Your mother's profession is for the female. You have the same profession. As you are going in the community, your parent knows what you want and what you dislike. Your parents know you more than yourself. They have gone through the same stages and then they are up there. So at a certain age, they will know that you need a man or you need a woman. They know the colors that you like. There is no one outside your home who knows the color that you like more than your parents. They know the type of food that you like more than them, anyone else. So they will look at someone who also is like similar things like you. And they will try and connect. And when they connect you, they can buy this, go and give it to this person. You buy it from there, go and give it to this person. 
exchange of gates. They just want to do your, your songs. Then one day they will tell you that, you know you are my son. That's and that's and that's, you know this lady. I want to marry this lady for you. You got to a certain stage that you need to make your own children. This is your land, this is your house, this is this, I'm giving it to you. So we are going in to marry for you. Then the, the, the ladies also, at that time, the lady's parents have been informed. So the ladies also, his parents will tell the same thing. Then they will bring you together, not on sexual basis. So you know that this person, in the next two months, three months, one year, I'm going to marry this person. Then the male's relatives, who also try and study the woman, uh, the wife to be. The wife to be relatives also would like to study the man who he is. If it is, it is the parents who are connected, that study has been done already. There is no problem. You just go ahead and contract the marriage. If you yourself found the lady somewhere, or the lady found the man somewhere, and then showed, oh, oh, mom, dad, this is a woman I want to live with, or this is a man that I found, and this, and blah, 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 blah. Then they will also send a committee to investigate the man's family or the woman's family. Because they see that you are in love, you want to get married. If they found a certain things in your family, that marriage cannot come, will never, never come on. They have to be cancelled. One, if they found out that the woman doesn't know how to cook, to feed your family and you can't cook for your own family, every African woman should cook with his head. And you're supposed to know how to cook them. So that your husband will always stick to you and will not go outside and look for someone else. Two, you know how to dress up. You don't wear your shirt with the bottom. One is longer, Afri Ghana is longer than Africa. Two, dress well. Three, the, one of the things that also they will look out for is to see whether the man or the woman's family are thieves, criminals. If they find out that there is nothing of that nature, there is another thing too that they look for. Have they been to jail before? Five. They also look at whether there is a hereditary disease or sickness in that family. Because both of them doesn't want their grandchildren to carry that type of disease. If it is something minimal, they know that they will be able to repair or give you some medicine, medication, and they will do that. That one is a lighter thing. For example, in the olden days, if someone has tuberculosis, they call it a ghost sickness, meaning that you've done something seriously against some ancestor who has struck you with that sickness or disease. That means your character is not good. The way of your, the way you talk, the way you act, the way you do things. So they check on all these things and report to the family head or the girl's father or the boy's father. Then they take a decision. Oh, okay, we found out that the family is good. They are this, they are that, they are this, they are that. So the marriage will come home. The dowry is being paid by the man, not the woman. Men don't go for marriage, women go for marriage. You, the man, for example, if I want to marry you, I will have to send, my parents have to send some people to your family and then bring you into my house or my home to live there with me. I will not go to the woman's home to live there with the woman. No. 
the woman have to come and live with the husband. That's in the scriptures. So shall a, a woman leave his house and live with the man and the two shall be one. In the scriptures. So the woman will pack her things after the marriage has been contracted. The most important thing in the marriage is for both sides to accept that person, him or her, coming into their family. During the marriage ceremony, a lot of friends, a lot of loved ones will be there. They'll dress nicely. And one of the good things that they do is that because it is the woman who is going for the marriage, all the direst things that they ask is there. Then they will call the woman. In the gathering, the woman will come and stand in front. And they will ask her an important question. That's one important question. Who can guess that important question? Do you love this money? Thank you. There is so much, not even love. Like, will you like to stay with this person or this man? Do you know him? They will ask you, where did you know him? Do you know him? Yes. Will you love to stay with him for life? Yes. They will ask you three times. Three times. This man has come to ask your hand in marriage. She brought all this things over here. Should we accept it? Say yes. So think about it carefully. Should we accept it? Yes. Some people have a funny way of, you know, saying this. But it's three times for everybody to hear that you have accepted the man. You want to go to his house. You want to stay with him. You want to be one with him. You want to him to be your children's father. So important in our tradition. If the parents are Christians, they will call a minister or a preacher or uh, whatever, reverend minister, to come and pray. If they are African traditionalists, they will call a bishop. And then, after you say yes, that is a big thing, a big step that you have taken. I have seen some that the lady says no. Yeah. The lady had a boyfriend there and the parent wanted this guy boyfriend and uh, the girl loved her so much. She also loved him. But the girl doesn't have money. The guy doesn't have money. But the parent wanted this guy to marry, the lady to marry uh, someone who returned from uh, outside the country and has so much money. The lady said, I don't know, I don't love him. You were trying to connect us, but I don't love him. And the parents were forcing the lady to accept it. The lady, someone advised her very quiet. And on the D day, everybody was there, they asked, Do you love this person? Are you ready to move into this guy's house? He said, No. Now think about it very well. There's a man who came from here, this and this, who want to contract a marriage. We want you to go and this and that. So should we accept his things? He said no. Three times she said no. They have to stop immediately. The man have to pack his things and go away. The woman go away. That's enough. I've, I've seen that in once in my life. But most of the times, the lady will say, even they want to, even hurriedly, say yes. Now, you the man, when it happens like that, that is your first wife. Let me go back in the olden days, 100 years, 200 years ago, 70, 80, 90, 100 years ago. When a man marries a woman, that is your first wife. And then, it is the woman who will cook for you, the woman washes your dress. We don't use a uh, uh, washing machine. The woman uses a hand to wash. I use my hand to wash. 
it washes better and nicer than washing machine. Washing machine, you pay electricity bill, so high bills and this and that. No, this is a natural thing. Is it to wash? After washing your clothing, feeding you, you go to farm. The woman goes with you to farm, and then in the night. The woman also will perform her natural duties, making sure that you are making babies. As a result of that, the woman gets tired. So in the olden days, it is your first wife. When she sees that she is getting tired every day, then she will recommend to the husband to her husband, that's you, the man, that, you know I've been doing this, you know I do this, I do that. At the end of the day, I'm so tired. So I need someone to come and help me, uh, help me to do all this. Your first wife knows what you like and what you dislike. So before your first wife tells you this, she has already seen someone who has the same character like her, who understands her. So she brings in the second wife, show him to the husband. The husband says, okay, if she's only coming to help you, I have no problem. They will go and perform the marriage rites. The second wife comes in. Now, the first wife is the administrator of the family, of the house. So what does she do? She divides some of her toys to the second wife. When you wake up, you have to sweep here, you have to clean the bowls, I'll be doing this, I'll be doing that, and you will do this. And at the same time, it is the wife, first wife, who share the burden. We have seven days in a week. You are a junior one. I'm your senior. So you have the permission to go to your husband's room for three days. Maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is for you. I'll not be there. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Don't try. Don't go there. That is me. I also have to sleep with my husband. All these things are done by the first one. If they have children, she shares everything equal. At the end of the year, the husband calls both of them. You are senior, she said, Gina, you have helped so much. We have so much products we sold, we had us. What do you want for Christmas? What do you also want for Christmas? The first wife would say first. The second wife have to say things that are lower than the first wife's home. If the first wife says, okay, I want a wristwatch, I need a six pieces of clothing. I need this, I need that. The second wife have to say things that are lower. The cost is lower, the price is lower. The quantity is lower than the first one. It's a form of so much respect for the first wife. Then after that, the uh, uh, first wife, even sometimes money is being given to the first wife to take hers and give the rest to the second wife. Because she's the administrator, she will do everything justice. There is nothing that is called jealousy. Sometimes the first wife will be cooking, the second wife will be bathing both children, or cleaning the room. Or sometimes the second wife will be cooking, the first wife will be doing something else. I had a friend who is a police officer. I knew his first wife. Not that he has married two more wives. The first wife uh, doesn't do much work. The second wife, she has a, a shop that she sells. The third one also has a farm. The first one, uh, she has opened up a, a certain, uh, like a cooking joint that she sells something little. And all of them, at the end of the day, when I went there and I saw them, I thought they were first wife sisters. They are rivals. Rivalry doesn't 
extent to it, I mean, to food or whatever. They all sat down each from one bowl, unit. When I was growing, my mom and dad have nine children. And that's nine children, all of us eat from one bowl. We may have different spoons, all of us eat from one bowl. The food we pour into our a bowl and we dip our hands, as O and spoon into it and we eat. Up to now we are united. Up to now. So after doing this, they respect their husband so much. That is the first one. The second time our second one of girl or getting a second wife also can be if you are not a chief and the chief passed on or you are in a royal home and then you have been nominated as a nest of king. If the chief passed on, you have one wife already. I like this, I have a wife already. So if my uncle passed on, I can be nominated, I'm a head to the chair, so I can be nominated to be the next king. If I'm nominated and I accept it, traditional things goes on, they will give me a stool wife. A stool wife. And when they give me a stool wife, I will have two wives. I will have two wives. So that is how they continue to have the two wives. It is not a double thing. It is not a wicked thing. It's unity to bring people together. In the olden days, if a man goes to farm, for example, and you have, you have to farm one acre, when you marry and your wife also comes to help you to farm one acre, you have two acres. If you marry another woman, you have three acres. If you sell the product at the end of the, uh, 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 the year, you have much money. If you have children, that they can also farm. So in the, in the olden days, the wealthy people are uh, 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 farmers. They are the best meat in the bush. They eat the best food. No chemicals, nothing. Your wives are helping you in the farm. So if you want to be worthy, marry more wives. Now, currently, if you want to be worthy, what do you do? Currently, if you want to be worthy. You mean now? Yes, what do you do? Thank you, you create more jobs, you have more jobs. Because your salary alone, it is said that salary will make you poor. Business will make you rich. Your salary is about 80% uh, uh, of your salary, the money goes out. It's not yours, it's for people. Transportation, uh, utility, and this and that, and you have to pay. Then only 20% comes to you. Then why did you work? But if you have other source of income, it helps you to build up, to be wealthy. So if you have three wives and each and every wife have given birth to three children, you have nine children plus your three wives, how much? Twelve plus, uh, plus you yourself, thirteen. Thirteen, if each and every one is farming one acre a year, you have thirteen acres. You have more product, you have more money. You can feed them and feed the community and feed the kingdom. So our forefathers saw all this and they said, wow, then we can marry, the men can marry more wives so that they will be worthy and be able to feed the whole nation. With the woman, if you have two husbands, you are creating chaos. Why are you creating chaos? Both of us are looking for a baby. 
You came to me, I, I, I slept with you. You went to him, he slept with you. Who does that child belong to? You can't divide that child into two. You understand? Yes. Now you tell me that there is a, a machine that will determine. But the machine can also go wrong. The best thing is you, the woman, who knows the uh, father of the baby. Yes. And your calculation also can be wrong. But DNA test is not, uh, it's not right. I don't believe DNA test. Yeah. Let me tell you something that happened. Something that happened. Uh, there was this gentleman who married a very nice lady. They had their own house. So they uh, uh, had a, a maid who was helping them in the house, in the house choice. And then the maid has been doing something that the man doesn't like. So one day the man beats the uh, maid. The man doesn't want anybody in the house. So the maid brought in her male friends into the house. And as a result of that, some things were stolen from the house. And the man got angry and beat the lady. The lady went to his boyfriend. The guy impregnated her, came back to the house. And then the madam of the house, the man's uh, wife, saw that the woman, the girl is pregnant. And asked her, who made you pregnant? He said, your husband. He said, my husband? He said, yes. He said, no. So they asked the man. The man said, me sleeping with this girl? No. You are there, why should I? The lady got angry and packed off. The mistress of the house left the marriage. He said, that is infidelity. The man has gone outside to have a, a, a affair with her maid. So she left. The man said he hasn't done anything. The lady got angry and went to court. He got to court. When he went to court, the man denied, said, no way, it's never true. So he had to dissolve the marriage. And then the judge said he cannot do anything. There will be a DNA test until the woman gave birth. So the man should take care of the woman, of the maid, the girl. The man took care, the girl that was not staying in the house somewhere. Every man, the man had to give some money. Court says this, you have to do that. When the girl gave birth, and uh, I think in two or three months time, they went and did a DNA test. DNA test shows that it wasn't the boy. It wasn't the man. Then, the uh, girl's parents went and bribed the guy, the one who did the DNA test. So they called the girl, went doing the DNA test and asked him, your boyfriend and this guy, who can take care of you? He said, it's this man. So they did everything and sent it to the uh, court. When they went to the court, the girl was feeling uncomfortable, terrible uncomfortable. So the girl raised his hand and said he will tell the truth. What is the truth? The truth is that I did something. This man said I shouldn't do My master said I shouldn't do it. I brought some friends. And then he beat me. Because he beat me, I arranged with my boyfriend to make me pregnant. So it was intentional. But the DNA test shows that it was this guy. Meanwhile, it was arranged. So the DNA test was not right. Was not right. Finally, they let the man go. The girl left. Then the wife who left the marriage <coughs> got to know that the thing was not true. It was difficult for her to come back. Difficult. So I don't trust. It can be accurate. It can be inaccurate. You understand? Yeah. Do you know that there are a lot of young ladies, especially in Africa. I know in US, at the age of 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, they have their first child. When you ask them who is your husband, they can't tell who is their husband. Some of them will do, some of them don't. If you go and do a DNA test, and they point out that this person, this person will deny I'm not the one. So they ask the woman, 
who do you think you love that can take care of you? He said, this boy. Then they will write everything. But it is inaccurate because he think they don't want uh, uh, a lot of children without fathers. In Africa, it's happening. You don't want children without fathers. So therefore, you have to give him a father. As a result of that, they will link it to you. When you were doing the test, I wasn't there. So how do I know that it's true? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, now. But you can say, you can say the DNA test is accurate because it just, it, it wasn't the person who they thought it was. Yes. It, it showed that the boyfriend was, was the baby. Exactly, part. exactly. So in, in essence, the DNA was correct. Just that the girl told a lie. That happens a lot. Yes, that is why I'm saying that the DNA test, when I say it's not, I don't believe it, or it's not right, is that human being can be manipulated for the DNA test to go wrong, or the wrong thing to be right. Human being, it's like computer. Now, why do we type, you are typing, even sometimes your name, by the time you realize, oh, I'll type the wrong thing. But the machine itself, what you feed into the machine is what it came out. The machine hasn't done anything wrong. But it is the human being who sits down there to type or manipulate that makes it wrong. But you can't manipulate the machine to make the boyfriend. Okay. the grandparents, in fact it was the grandparent who brought it here to Ghana, and the grandparent says their grandparent told them they are Ghanaians, so they came to Ghana. We try to trace and they find a home, and when you look at the facial expression, when you look at the stretcher, when you look at the color, exactly them in Ghana. When she did a DNA test, they said 60% from Sierra Leone, 20% from Nigeria, 10% from this, 10% from that. But it's just all right. That, that's just yeah, I told you, yeah. All right. Now, then she went and did another one at a different place. Also gave him a different result. Right. <laughs> yeah. But uh, this, is, uh, this happened to me, to me okay. my family. Okay. My daughter had her DNA done. Okay. But I really wasn't interested in DNA. So she had her DNA done, right? And it's so like, uh, she's 98% African, she's this, 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 Right, so, and then a couple of other people in my family had their DNAs done, right? Okay. One day, um, the company sent my daughter a notice that she had a first cousin. So my daughter comes to me and says, uh, who is this person? Uh -huh. I didn't know who the person was, never heard of the person. Yeah. So I'm asking my sisters, could our mother have had another child uh -huh. and we didn't know about it? Because yes. obviously you, this person's mother had to be our sister. Yes. So we all, we all scratching our heads. There's a lot of gossip in the family. What, did, what happened? Where did this person come from? Uh -huh. So I said, oh, okay, everybody just calm down. Just calm down. I said, what I'm going to do with it, I'm going to go and have my DNA done. Okay. I'm going to have my DNA done. So I had my DNA done, 
And sure enough, this person wasn't on my DNA. Uh -huh. So I said to my daughter and the rest of the family, oh, just forget about it. Does it? Must have been a mistake, because if she, she she's not on my DNA, there's no way possible she could be on uh -huh. my daughter's DNA. Okay. okay. So things do happen. Exactly. exactly. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So that is the reason why in Africa, the men married more than one wife. If you are to live here for a certain number of years, you will understand. There was a time I, I, I was giving a lecture like this. And I said, no, 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 no. But at the end of it, they saw the need. Why is it that men marry so much? One of the reasons also is that, not about farming and whatever, but rather procreation. Procreation. Procreation because in Africa, human beings are your assets. It is not your vehicles, it is not your house, it is not your money, your fame or status. No. It is your children. Because when you pass on, it is your children who are going to bury you. The more children you have, the more worthy you are. Let me explain that one also. If you have 10 children with three or four wives, everybody knows that there's a, look at Shabazz. He has two wives. I think he has about six or seven children. Everybody knows that he, this is our father. He is our father. If all the children got a good job, good school, good school, good job, and they are working. At the end of every year, if or at the end of every month, if there's seven children, each and every one is giving his daddy hundred dollars. How much does he have? Seven hundred dollars free. That is his insurance for bringing me to the world. Seven free, no tax, nothing. Here in Africa, we have a, an habit that we say that your mother has given birth or your parents have give, helped you to grow teeth. You also help them to lose their teeth. Meaning that they have taken care of you, you are up there. You also take care of them in their own age. And that's what we do. I take care of my mom. My father, my dad passed on 2015. So I take care of my mom. And it is my duty, all my brothers and sisters, it is our duty to take care of our mother until God calls her. She has invested in us. We also need to invest in her. Return whatever we have, she gave to us. So she has helped us to grow teeth. We also have to help her sell teeth. Yeah. What has your father invested? And I say, I'm not, like I said, I'm not talking about you, I'm just a general statement. Yeah. Okay, so the way it sounds to me, like the woman is doing all the work and the man is just sitting back uh, making babies and, and, and living a good old life there. No. But, uh, I, okay, I agree, the, the, you know, my mama took care of me, I, you know, I over, you know, age, we take care. But what did that man, what did he contribute? The, the woman doesn't take care of the children alone. The man also. Where does the money come in? The money comes in through the man's pocket. Where does the, uh, uh, what do you call, trading of the child comes in? He's closer to the mother, he's also closer to the father. We saw Shabazz picking the children. The children, the mother is at the kitchen cooking, but you see Shabazz moving with the kid. One of the kids wanted to drown the other night. He was controlling him. And that is also his contribution. When the children go to school, he has to, even if he doesn't have money, make sure he get money, pay for the children's school fees. Their transportation in and out, the food that they will eat, all these things are on the man. The man has to provide. That's it. So you have to do it. That's it. That is creating a bigger family. So as you create a bigger family, more money comes in and lessons in all of your bed. That's traditional. However, in the modern world now, we have women who are bringing in just as much money as men's bringing in. And that's rough policy of a bit of a rub. Okay. Yeah. Now? Now. Okay. I mean, we want to respect 
yeah. The reality is that women are supposed not to work. Right. Right. They are supposed to be married. The man work and take care of them. But, in but right now, because of the economy, the economy is getting harder and harder. Then the woman will say, "Remember, I said the man goes to the farm with the wives, and sometimes." The man also creates a job for the wives. Or the woman creates a, what is it creating a job? Maybe you want to sell some item. The man has to give you money, come out with a shop, do this, do that, so that you can also make some profits here. So that you can also, your skills that God has given to you, you'll be able to portray your skills at this place. That will help the family. So this person is looking at us, this person is doing that, this person is doing this, the man also is taking the chunk of it. More than half of it lies in the shoulders of the man. But currently, women will take up the challenge. But the question that I was expecting to, uh, to ask is that, the, uh, if we share one is to one, the rest of the women, who will take care of them? Then they have to do their own work. You understand? They have to take do their own way. Who helps them up? Nobody helps them up. That is why our ancestors, that old, 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 old tradition, they allow the men to marry more. In some organizations or in some traditions, the women in the community who have not married, all of them are the chief's wives doesn't care the number, 20, 50, whatever. So they wake up in the morning, go to the chief up and sweep and do this. The chief first wife doesn't sleep with all of them. First, second or third wife are there. You don't do anything. People will come and do voluntary work for you. The woman will come and do voluntary work for you. And at the end of it, uh, you give them some food to eat, you take care of them, and then that's all. They'll tell you that the chief's wife. If I go to that community, and I need a wife, I have to go to the chief. And the chief will say, okay, these are my three wives, my four wives, but these are people who come to my place to work, my concubine. So I would like you to marry this person. The chief will point out some people who have good characters for you to go and marry. And I want to marry those people, that is all. If I say that is all, what I'm trying to say is that those troubles and problems and all these things can too. Yeah. This is because of the economy. These days, because of jealousy, also jealousy. Uh, every woman wants to have things to herself. Doesn't want to share. If there is a vehicle, no, I want a vehicle to myself. I don't want to share with my rival. And in those days, those they are not rivalry. They are not struggling. Rivalry means struggling for something. They are not struggling for anything. You are peacefully staying here. You are also peacefully staying here. Everybody has its own room, everybody has its own house, and you all stay in the compound house. That is why when you come to Africa, you see a lot of compound houses. A lot of compound houses. We do things in common. When you think about American, American uh, uh, let me use the word mentality, it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. But when you come to Africa and you see all this, oh yes, it's so strong and it works perfectly for us. outside there has also has a parent. Have you consulted the parents? Have you talked to the parents? You don't go direct to the lady. But you go to the parents and you talk to them when they are doing the parents will talk to the girl. They know what the girl like. They know what the girl doesn't like. So you the man know. 
<laughs> but currently things have changed. Yes, in some quarters it's the same. In some quarters, no, it has changed terribly. You see a woman by the way, you pay her and you know, uh, 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 you propose to her and before you go and see your parents and then customer rights and all those things. Yeah. Yes, sir. I got a better understanding. Thank you, sir. It's, it's for the better of the community. The way it's set up that way. Yeah. It's not this jealousy. Yeah. It's for the building up. Exactly. Of our family is a company. Yeah. That's where I get it down. Thank you. Yes. As I said, yeah, your children are your assets. So the more children you have, there's some of these children are the soldiers of the community. If someone is going to attack the father, the children are going to defend you. Right. Become a soldiers. Okay. If there is an epidemic in the community, and then you have 10 children, if some affect them, some will die, some will be dead. But you have two kids or one child, and there's an epidemic when the person died, it's gone. You have to start again. So, men are advised to get more women to die. See, the answer to his question back there, okay. the marriage women is not for love. No. It's for the welfare of the community. Exactly. Right. Uh, but I understand that, but I'm talking about sharing your hand. I just, I'm sorry, that's going to be hard. But hold on. And I'm saying that, okay, if he's got to have a wife, she's just going to cook and cook on. you got to have another wife, she's just going to listen. And then maybe I can just get some sleep if that's the case. You know, you got a little bit of help. <laughs> but as far as sharing, because we, you know, we come with marriage. That's that's that's. But hold on, I'm gonna let me just. I I got that. It's a community, but. The children born by the man is not not. Uh uh uh. You cannot say. Only my children are my biological children. We don't have anything like biological. From the first wife, second wife, third or whatever wife, all of them are your children. This one also, all of them are his children. The children, all of them, this is his father. These are their mothers. That's all. There is no discrimination. When we saw Shabazz, we have two wives, and when you see the wives, chatting and laughing and doing cooking together. It's lovely. They do things in common. All the kids do. They, all, both of them are mothers. That's all. Unity. Yeah, that's understand. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay, so thank you so much. Another time we'll take another topic. Let's relax. <laughs>